Hi, this is Ben Schreiber, and welcome to Music Alga. This is the binary search analysis video, which presents an introduction to Big O analysis that will show you how useful binary search is for finding specific information in a very long list of data. So let's get started. So here's the agenda. First, we're going to review the binary search procedure. So if you're still feeling shaky on the algorithm after that, please take a look at my intuition video on binary search. Um, next, we're going to do a big O analysis of the best case and worst case runtime of binary search and compare this with linear search. And next, we're going to do a big O analysis of the memory usage of the algorithm. It's not too interesting, but we'll do it anyway. So I actually decided to not include the potential programming pitfalls section in this video. There will be a supplemental video that will have those. And if I mention any uh, funky vocabulary or concepts that you're not familiar with, please check out the prerequisite section of my site, musicalgo.com. Also, instead of discussing programming pitfalls, we are going to briefly discuss applications of binary search at the end of this video. So here's what binary search is about. Binary search is an algorithm that searches for a value called key in a sorted list of values. So the key could be a word and the sorted list of values could be a dictionary. You're looking for a word in a dictionary. Um, it successively cuts the array in half till it finds the key. So it can do this because it is sorted. Um, each time you evaluate the middle position between the low and high, you can rule out either the values from mid to high or the values from low to mid. It takes in parameters low and high, so you can specify a range in the list you're looking for. Low and high are indices. And to search for the entire list, you can set low equal to zero and high equal to the length of the list minus one. So you can see that the low index is at position zero. And the high index is at position 3, where the length of the list is 4, so 4 minus 1 is 3. Which means that here we're searching through the entire list for the key of 8. So here's how the procedure goes. We keep on following the indented steps while the low index is less than or equal to the high index. So the first instruction we execute is finding the midpoint between the low and high indices, and then we check the value at the midpoint. So if the value at the midpoint is greater than the key, we set high to mid minus one. So we don't need to regard any of the values beyond or to the right of the midpoint because the list is sorted. Else, if the value at the midpoint is less than the key, we set low to mid plus one. So we can disregard values at the mid and below because our list is sorted again. And if neither of these two if conditions have been met, we know that the key exists at the mid index because if it's not less than the key and the value there is not greater than the key, then it must be equal to the key. So if you leave the while loop, then the key cannot be found. When we analyze the performance of binary search, we are going to use a notation called big O, which will measure its performance relative to the size of the input list of values. So performance can be the number of steps or time elapsed, or the amount of memory needed, and we will do both here. We can see the visual here shows various relationships between the size of the input list, the x-axis, and how much time the algorithm takes to run, the y-axis. So here we see a constant relationship in gray, logarithmic in brown, quadratic and I guess purple, and so on. So there are many different relationships in algorithms performance can have with the size of the input list. So again, when we do this analysis, we see how many steps and how much memory binary search will need for a generic list of size n. So we do both of these analyses separately. 
uh, one for steps and the other for memory. So once we've determined this, we omit constant coefficients. Here, a constant is just a real value. So it's not a variable. Here, n is the variable. After we've removed constant coefficients, we remove any terms that are dominated as the input size tends toward infinity. Now, dominated means that if you keep on plugging bigger and bigger values for n, you see which of the terms gets larger at a faster rate. So, let's look at an example. Let's say that we determine an algorithm uses 4n squared plus n steps. So, we first remove constant coefficients. 4 is a constant coefficient. And we remove any terms that are dominated as we plug in larger and larger values for n. So here we have two terms. We have a quadratic term here and we have a linear term. And if we look at a graph of the quadratic versus the linear, n squared is going to get bigger much faster than n, right? The graph of n squared is going to look like this, where the graph of n is just going to look like this. So this is a much uh, faster growing slope. In fact, the slope doesn't grow at all. Anyway, so now we can remove the linear term. All that's left is n squared, so the algorithm runs at O of n squared. So you may wonder, you know, I understand that all we have to do is remove constant coefficients and any terms that are dominated. But why do we have to do this? Well, big O is what's called an asymptotic analysis, where we're interested in the behavior as the input size grows toward infinity. And typically in a mathematical analysis, an as asymptotic analysis, we're not really concerned with constant coefficients and dominated terms as n grows larger and larger because they become increasingly insignificant. So that's why we follow this procedure. Binary search performs best when the key exists at the middle position in the list because the very first thing we do in that while loop is check the value at the middle position and if it's equal to our key we stop iterating. So in this case, we only make one lookup in our list, and that means that it's going to be O of 1 runtime in the best case. So before we get any further in the analysis here, let's just go through a brief explanation of how logarithms work. So saying log sub A of C equals B is equivalent to saying that A raised to the B equals C. To see what I mean, let's look at a couple of examples. So what is the answer of log base 2 or sub 2 of 32? The answer is going to be 5 because 2 raised to the 5 equals 32. Now log sub 10 of 100, what's the answer to that? The answer is going to be 2 because 10 raised to the 2 equals 100. So here a equals 10, c equals 100, and b equals 2. So we can see that a raised to the b equals c. Now for a more in-depth explanation of logarithms, please check out the prerequisite section of my site musicalgo.com and now we're going to move along in the analysis. The worst case for binary search is when the key does not exist in the list at all. In this case, we're gonna make log base 2n lookups in the list. And let's examine how we arrive at that. How do we know that it will make log base 2n lookups in the worst case? Well, to do this, I'll define question mark as the number of lookups we'll make in the worst case. So, because binary search cuts the list in half until it finds the key's place, we're really looking for how many times a list of size n can be cut in half. And we can state this as 
n divided by 2 to the question mark equals 1. So how many times must n be divided by 2 to yield 1? Which is equivalent to saying n equals 2 raised to the question mark. Right? Because we're just uh, multiplying both sides by 2 to the question mark. Now we can take the log of both sides, so base 2. And by rules of logs, log base 2 of 2 to the question mark equals question mark. And now we can say that the number of lookups that we're going to make in the worst case is log base 2 of n. And thus we can say that the algorithm runs at O of log base 2 of n. So here's an example of where we're looking through the key of 3 inside of the list 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we can see that the key of 3 is not in this list. And we're going to perform binary search on it and count the number of lookups we make because we want to check that this is consistent with our finding that it will make log base 2 of n lookups. So initially our low is at position 0, our high is at position 7, so our mid is going to be at position 3. So we're going to check the value at the middle position and compare it with our key. We can see that our key is less than the value at the middle position, so we're going to move the high to mid minus 1. So at this point we've made one lookup at 8. We looked at the value of position 3. And now our mid is going to be position 1 since our high is at position 2, low is at position 0. So we check to see if our mid is less than or equal to or greater than the key. It is less than, so again we move our high to mid minus 1. So at this point we've now made two lookups. We just look up the value at position 1. So now our low and high are at position 0, which I have denoted with a star. And we also know that the mid's going to be at position 0. So we compare our key to the value at the middle position. And we see that it is greater than the value at the middle position. So 3 is greater than 2. At this point, we move our low up to mid plus 1. So now the low is going to be greater than the high. And we stop looking. So after that look up, we break from the loop. And we see we've made uh, three lookups. So we had eight values in the list. Um, and because... 2 to the 3 equals 8, our results are consistent with the finding that binary search runs at O of log base 2n in the worst case. And now this example did come out to exactly log base 2n, but it's possible that it may go like 1 over. But approximately log base 2 of n is the absolute worst case number of lookups for binary search. The alternative to binary search is linear search where you look at every single value in the list until you find the key that you're looking for. In the worst case, when the key does not exist in the list, linear search will run at O of n because it will look at all n values in the list. So now we're gonna see how many lookups linear search makes in the worst case. So here, um, we're looking at a list of size four. We're looking for the value of three in this list. All right, so we're gonna count the number of lookups we make. First, we look at the initial position. Uh, two is there, that is not equal to our key, so we made one lookup. We look at the next one, key's not there. Another one, key's not there. Another one, key's not there. So our list was size four and we made four lookups, which is consistent with our finding that linear search runs at O of N. And you may wonder, you know, why do we have to look beyond four if this list is sorted? How can three exist beyond four in this list? That's a legitimate concern, and that's exactly why binary search is a much better option than linear search, 
when you have a sorted list because binary search will search strategically through this list and rule out half of the list on each lookup, whereas linear search just uses brute force and looks from the very beginning until it finds that key. So let's do the memory analysis. We will uh, grade this on the number of values binary search stores. So other than the input list itself, binary search stores the low, middle, and high indices. So that's going to be three values, which means that we can classify this as three times n to the zero. That's simply three times one. And the first thing we do is remove constant coefficients. And now we can simply classify this as O of 1 memory usage because n to the 0 is equal to 1. Let's talk about applications. So binary search is very useful for finding specific information in a sorted list of data. And here's an example of an application that I thought of. So say you have an enormous library of movies and you want to see if Shrek is in your library. So you could write a program that looks through your library and determines if you have Shrek. So you might be with a bunch of friends, actually, and you guys are just thinking of movies that you might want to see, and you could just repeatedly query your library for every movie you're interested in seeing. So if your library is big enough, you could actually notice the difference if you wrote this programming linear search versus binary search. Binary search would find the movies much, much faster than linear search. And you can see that there are many, many applications in the real world where if you're querying information over and over again, you would want to be able to do it quickly. This is exactly why binary search is so useful and so fundamental. So here are some of the takeaways from this video. Binary search takes O of log base 2n time to run because it successively cuts the list in half. It uses O of 1 memory because it only needs to store three values. And lastly, when compared to linear search, binary search is way faster when you're searching through a sorted list of data. So I hope you found this video useful. Now you should be ready for the binary search song and code video, which recaps the facts from this video and provides you with pseudocode lyrics that rhyme and will help you implement binary search in any programming language. So if you have any feedback for me, please share it. If you found this video really useful, please share it with your friends. And thanks for watching.